a big earthquake in the U.S. Pacific Northwest? Most people don't associate the U.S. Pacific Northwest with earthquakes. But maybe they should. It's home to the 600-mile-long Cascadia Mega Thrust Fault, stretching from Northern California to Canada's Vancouver Island. The Cascadia Subduction Zone, or CSZ, Mega Thrust Fault, is a 1,000-kilometer-long dipping fault that stretches from northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino, California. It separates the Juan de Fuca Plate and the North American Plate. Now, the new Juan de Fuca Plate material is created offshore here at the Mid-Ocean Ridge, in the middle of the Pacific Plate here. And the Juan de Fuca Plate moves towards and is eventually shoved down underneath here under the North American Plate. And that forms the Cascadia Megathrust in that subduction zone. Now, at depths shallower than 30 kilometers or so, the Cascadia subduction zone is locked by friction. And while strain slowly builds up as the subduction force acts, until the fault's frictional strength is exceeded and the rocks slip past each other along the fault in a megathrust earthquake. The fault's frictional properties change with depth and latitude, such that immediately below the locked part is a strip called the transition, the transition zone that slides in. Slow slip events that slip a few centimeters every dozen or so months. Sometimes a little more, we get those earthquakes offshore here. Now, below the transition zone, geodetic evidence suggests that the fault slides continuously and silently along term plate slip rate. And this is just assumed from its surface trace offshore to a depth of possibly five kilometers, all remote from land. Observations are few, and it remains unknown whether the fault is stuck or is actually slipping silently. Now, great subduction zone earthquakes, by the way, are the largest earthquakes in the world and are the only source zones that can produce earthquakes greater than magnitude M85. The Cascadia rupture zone has produced magnitude 9 or greater time and time again in the past. And undoubtedly, unabashedly, will rupture again in the future. The last known megathrust earthquake in the Northwest was January of 1700, just over 300 years ago. And geologic evidence indicates that such great earthquakes have occurred at least seven times in the last 3,500 years at a return interval of four to 600 years. And we're going to talk about the 1700 Cascadia earthquake. The most me recent megathrust, which will give us some information about what we have to look forward to in the near future. Now, the 1700 Cascadia earthquake occurred along the Cascadia subduction zone on January 26th of 1700 with an estimated moment magnitude of 8.7 to 9.2. The megathrust earthquake involved the Juan de Fuca plate from mid-Vancouver Island south along the Pacific Northwest coast as far as Northern California. And the area is marked for you, quite obviously. The length of the fault rupture was 1,000 kilometers, or 620 miles, with an average slip of over 20 meters, 66 feet for you Americans. The earthquake caused a tsunami which struck the coast of Japan and may also be linked to the Bonneville slide 
and the T C X cone eruption of British Columbia. And we're gonna play a animation for you to get you up to speed. Now, let's talk about the evidence. The earthquake took place at 2100 Pacific time on January 26, 1700. Although there are no written records for the region from the time, the timing of the earthquake has been inferred and in fact confirmed from not only Japanese records, but from dendrochronology of trees. And these Japanese records of a tsunami that does not correlate with any other Pacific Rim quake suggest that it is the Cascadia rupture zone. The Japanese records exist primarily in the modern day Iwate prefecture in communities such as Tuchukawashi in Kwashasaki, as well as Otuchi. The most important clue linking the tsunamis in Japan and the earthquake in the Pacific Northwest comes from studies of tree rings, which show that several ghost forests of red cedar trees in Oregon and Washington killed by lowering of coastal forests into the tidal zone by the earthquake have outermost growth rings that formed in 1699, the last growing season before the tsunami of 1700. This includes both inland stands of trees, such as the one on Copolis River in Washington, and pockets of tree stumps that are now under the ocean's surface and become exposed only at low tide, leading people to question why. Sediment layers in these locations demonstrate a pattern consistent with seismic and tsunami events around 1700. Core samples from the ocean floor, as well as debris samples from some earthquake-induced landslides in the Pacific Northwest, also support the timing of this event. Archaeological research in the region has uncovered evidence of several coastal villages having been flooded and abandoned around 1700. Now let's talk about future threats. And give a thumbs up over here to this video at Pacific The Weather Channel. Even subscribe if you can. Tell them Diamond sent you and tell them why. Now we're going to look at the tsunami wave simulation from Washington State. The most recent simulation of what would happen if a 9 magnitude quake were to strike currently. <clears throat> the geologic record reveals that great earthquakes, those with moment magnitude 8 or higher, occur in the Cascadia subduction zone about every 500 years on average, often accompanied by major tsunamis. There's evidence of at least 13 events at intervals from 300 to 900 years, with an average of 570 to 590 years. Previous earthquakes are estimated to have occurred in 1310 A.D., 1810 A.D., 400 A.D., 170 B.C., and 600 B.C. As seen in the 1700 quake, the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, and the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, subduction zone earthquakes can cause large, deadly tsunamis. And many coastal areas in the region have prepared tsunami evacuation plans in anticipation of a possible future Cascadia earthquake. However, the major cities nearby, notably Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, Victoria, Tacoma, which are located on inland waterways rather than on the coast, would be sheltered from the full brunt of the major tsunami. These cities do have Many vulnerable structures, however, especially bridges, unreinforced brick buildings, and consequently, most of the damage to the cities would be from the earthquake itself due to liquefaction, and they would be destroyed completely. One expert asserts that buildings in Seattle are vastly inadequate, even to withstand an event the size of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, let alone a Cascadia rupture. Kenneth Murphy, who directs FEMA's Region X, the division responsible for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Alaska, put it quite dramatically. Our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 will be missing. 
Recent findings conclude that the Cascadia subduction zone is more complex and volatile than previously believed. In 2010, geologists predicted a 37% chance of an M8.2 or greater event within 50 years and a 10 to 15% chance that the entire Cascadia subduction zone would rupture with an M9 or greater event within the same time frame. Geologists have also determined the Pacific Northwest is not prepared for such a colossal quake. The tsunami produced could reach heights of 80 to 100 feet. A 2004 study revealed the potential for relative mean sea level rise along Cascadia's subduction zone. It is postulated that cities on the west coast of Vancouver Island, such as Tofino and Uluset, are at risk for a two-meter drop relative to mean sea level, which means they would potentially be underwater. The confirmation of their oral traditions about a great earthquake has led many Aboriginal groups in this area to initiate projects to relocate their coastal communities. Are you picking that up? To hire safer ground in preparation from, for the predicted next earthquake. The Huyai At people have rebuilt their administration building on a high point of land in their territory. Coastal residents are immediately evacuated to this building whenever a tsunami warning is issued. As an interim me measure toward eventually re relocating all residents to higher ground, the Quillette people secured land grant from the federal government of the United States in 2012 to move their settlement inland, both as protection from future tsunamis as well as more frequent flooding along the Uyayet River. The Shoalwater Bay Indian tribe also has set a goal of moving their community uphill, as has received FEMA PDM grants to build their first vertical evacuation tower on their coast, scheduled to be completed near the Toklin Marina by 2022. There are other subduction zones that have such earthquakes every 100 to 200 years. The longer interval results from slower plate motions. The rate of convergence between the Juan de Fuca and the North American plate is 2.4 inches per year. And time, well, time is running out. Like and subscribe the video at the Washington State Department of Natural Resources and we would appreciate that. Now let's talk about 10,000 years of Cascadia earthquakes. You heard all the facts. You heard how it works. The slipping slowly slides in the upper regions while it's locked deeper down. And at some point, the mega thrust ruptures. Now let's look at the periodicity of the rupturing over the last 10,000 years. The last rupture in 1700 was around 9 magnitude, between 8, 7, and 9, 2. So they put it right at 9. If you look at all the major 9 magnitude peaks, they're followed by a smaller quake in this lower 8 mag. Large 9 mag, lower 8 mag. Large, small. Large, small. Large, small. Large, small. Almost 100%. Over 90% of the large earthquakes are followed by lesser, lower 8 magnitude. And we are at the same periodicity, so it is our supposition that the next quake will be 8.3 magnitude and will happen any day. Now, when I mean any day, I don't mean tomorrow. There will be precursors. And we have millions of people, more than ever before, which are equipped with seismographs and access to in instantaneous data worldwide that we will pick it up before it gets itself put down. The chart below shows all 40 major earthquakes in the Cascadia subduction zone that geologists estimate have occurred based on data, based on core samples, a new 
a whole new cacophony of research has been funded in this region, including soil samples at more than 50 undersea sites between Washington, Oregon, and California. The average quake is 246 years. We are over 50 years in deficit, and it's going to happen soon because they're triggered by the sun. Amazingly enough. When will the next major rupture happen? It probably will be a minor major, 8.5 or less. It will kill hundreds, if not thousands of people. It will literally change the Pacific Northwest. But we have lots of new studies, lots of new data. So it's not a pot shoot. It's not potluck. We're not basing this on hokey data. We have tiltimeters and seismograms. We have buoys. There will be shifts before the megathrust happens. There will be precursor events. It may only be a day. It may only be half a day. But there'll be time to get to higher ground. We have seismic monitoring networks like the USGS, which are basically useless because they delay information by up to 30 minutes. So the modern world is going to be no help. But you can pick up on things if you live in this region. Your pets, your neighbors. You can feel it in your bones. If you're aware, you'll know it's about to happen. And when it does happen, you'll have react immediately. Go to higher ground. Get to safety if you're in these regions. Warn others. Together, many of us will survive in this area. Time is ticking. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when. And we know that during the last grand solar minimum, Cascadia faulted. And we're heading into the next grand minimum. Major earthquakes occur on magnetic reversals of the sun, on those flexor points. We're about to hit one. Will it happen this year or will it happen during the next solar cycle? It's anyone's guess. But the new Madrid and the Cascadia will fault in your lifetime. If you got a few decades left. I hope you got something out of the video. The Cascadia rupture zone has been faulting time immemorial because of a locking mechanism on the megathrust. We are now over 50% probability of an 8.5 magnitude earthquake on that fault in your lifetime. Anytime. Prepare now and be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel, share this with like-minded people, and prepare with the ranch.com. Time is ticking. Tick tock.